Minister Bill Blair did something that had never happened in Canada before. He did this national consultation, and I actually attended one. Um, and uh, Tony Bernardo from the CSSA was with me, and it was actually really great. I told the uh, Fifth Estate yesterday, um, it was a fantastic experience. It was really, really worthwhile. And then the minister ignored everything and just came out with a political solution to the shootings in downtown, which is, you know, been semi autos right? Semi-automatic rifles. Hi, it's Keith with On Target Canada. Today we're here with Tracy Wilson from the CCFR at TACOM 2019. Tracy, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks a lot Good for having to see me you. over, Keith. That's uh, great. A couple questions I wanted to ask you and talk to you about, and the first one is the, the current growth in the, the firearms community and what you're seeing as you go out across the country and people getting interested in, this, in shooting and the sport of shooting. Can you talk about where you're seeing the growth and what's driving it? Yeah, well, I think the, the you know, for a long time we've been conditioned to sort of hide in the closet, be quiet about our sport for fear of, you know, a, a bad legislation or things happening to us. Well, this is solid proof that it hasn't worked, right? Where we are in, in uh, very unfriendly times. So I think what with the CCFR, our goal is to do the complete opposite. We've got a national TV show, we've got black guns and handguns brought into the living room of over 5 million Canadians on national television highlighting in a positive manner the uh, shooting sports in Canada. This is super important and it, what it's doing is it's bringing in a whole new generation of sports shooters. You know, you got all these young guys that, you know, maybe they're, you know, looking for a sport that, that they can participate in. The shooting sports is literally for everybody. Um, so I find we're, the demographic is getting a lot younger and we also have a huge increase in women in the shooting sports. Right, and that's something you're involved yes. with. And a lot of uh, ladies only, not only training, but range days as well. Yeah. And, and they're going over very well? Yeah, I think we've done over 40 this summer alone. So I've been traveling from Calgary to PEI doing these ladies days, and they're amazing. It's a great opportunity for women who otherwise wouldn't have the chance to ever even try a firearm. You know, you got all these soccer moms and people that aren't within our community who watch the news, who vote, who form opinions based on what they know. If all they hear is all the negative stuff from the media and politicians, you know, they're, they're going to vote for gun control measures or politicians that are going to enforce them. So the idea is to get these girls out to the range, you know, uh, you get a soccer mom with a Glock in her hand, she's having a blast, her friends are taking pictures, they're coming out in teams, now they're, they've started showing up in matching t-shirts and uh, all the ladies from work joining each other and coming out. So it's a great opportunity to um, highlight it in a really positive manner for women. And what happens from that is they start posting it on social media. Their friends, who also aren't gun owners, um, will see that on social media. They'll start sharing it. Hey, you got to go and shoot an AR-15? Where, where did you do that? I want to try it. And next thing you know, they're signing up for a ladies' day. The more women that get into it also bring more children, right? So then you've got you know, these soccer moms coming on our youth days and bringing their kids to come out and try the 22 pistols and the long rifles and things like that. So, you know, I I think the idea of hiding behind a curtain and hoping nobody looks at us and hits us over the head with legislation, those days are over because it hasn't worked, it's it's failed. And um, yeah, we're, we're, we're going the complete opposite direction. Excellent, that's yeah, great to hear. Uh, it's 2019, it's an election year. Yes. Uh, we've had some setbacks, uh, C-71. Yeah. And, and we fought that, you fought that very, as, uh, very strenuously. Uh, we're heading into election, we're just over a month away. What can the gun owners and the shooters do right now to help us out? Well, just to touch on C-71 quickly, although I, I, I was honest right from the beginning, we fought it long and hard for 14 months. It was the most opposed piece of legislation in history, right? Um, 14 months later, we, we always knew it, it would pass. They've got a majority government. There's no actual stopping the bill, right? There, right? There's no way to stop it. We knew it would pass, but after 14 months and the bill finally receiving royal assent, here we are, the measures have still not been implemented because they require an OIC in order in council in order for all those measures to actually be enacted. Well, none of that's happened. So although the bill's passed, it's not technically in effect yet except for the ability for Quebec to apply for the registry information. Right. Other than that, all the other measures are still up in the air. I'm perfectly happy with that, I'm not complaining, um, but I think it shows the lack of seriousness of this government. They 
they passed that bill as a way to pacify the anti-gun lobbies, to make it look like they've done something. And I, I will be surprised if it's ever even... And I think we're seeing that with their, their reaction to the questions about what is your gun platform, and they're saying, well, we'll tell you after the we'll election. Tell you later. Which means yeah. they don't have anything. That's right. So, so, so there are some things gun owners can do. I know it, it seems a little dismal. We, you know, we had C-71, although it's technically not, not running yet. Um, and then we've had all these threats of handgun bans and you know, assault rifle bans. There are some things gun owners can do. Number one, you got to get out there and vote. Um, I, I know sometimes voting day comes and you're watching a game or you're doing something and you're like, oh, I don't know. Not only do you got to get out, you got to drive your friends, drive your family, grab your brother, your sister, your cousins, your neighbors. Get everybody you can, get them out. Every vote is going to count in this election. It's going to be neck and neck. Right. Um, the other thing is, too, is if, if you can find a pro-gun candidate, I mean, the CCFR is nonpartisan. If you can find a pro-gun candidate that you want to support, you got to get out there and you've got to volunteer for them. Now, not everybody wants to knock on doors. It's a very difficult thing if you're not a public person. But there are other jobs you can do. They need people to man the phones, to call around uh, constituents, to drive other volunteers, to cook a lunch for volunteers. There's things that you can do for your individual EDA that are incredibly important. Every little bit helps. Um, and then um, donate. So I've been picking some key candidates. They're not even my, it's not even my personal writings where I live. Uh, you've got Kimberly uh, Fawcett running against Bill Blair yes. in Scarborough. Very important writing. Very important writing. So I donated $71 to her. Uh, you've got Justina McCaffrey running in Canada Carleton, a suburb of Ottawa. She's running against Karen McCrimmon, who is Ralph Goodale's parliamentary secretary. Okay. Um, and she, they're neck and neck right now, so I donated $71 to her. Um, then we've got uh, Tom, oh, what is his name? Running in Ajax against Mark Holland. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm for Dean Wall. Tom Dingwall, okay. sorry, took me a minute. Uh, running in Ajax against Mark Holland, who as we know is probably ultimately our biggest enemy. Um, so I donated $71 to him. So I donate $71, then I send them an email asking them if they'd like to know why I donated $71 to give me a call, and they do. They call me and I tell them why. And right. you can see these have all been really great advocates for gun owners. Justina McCaffrey just set up a booth for the whole weekend at the Carp Gun Show. So, you know, she's not a, a gun owner, but she wants to support the community. So, they, you know, there's some stuff we can do. You got to get out there and work so for it. Time for us to get involved, time for us to become more vocal and, and definitely push our issues. Tracy, thank yes. you much for taking time out of your day. Thanks, We're here at TACOM 2019. Uh, get out and vote. If you can take somebody to the range, introduce them to shooting, that's probably one of the biggest things you can do. And if every, every registered shooter took a couple people a year to the range, yep. we'd grow incredibly. Yes. Enjoy uh, the rest of the show, Tracy. Thanks, and we'll see you around.